Web 3.0 is well on its way. Some would even argue that it is already here to an extent. But what exactly is Web 3.0? Many of us didn't even know that there was a Web 1 or 2. No need to worry though, in today's video, we're going to dive deep into the next generation of the internet. Welcome to Crypto Sketch 101. We're the number one go-to spot for all things crypto, and we're glad you've stopped by. If you love cryptos as much as we do, please give this video a like, and be sure to subscribe to our channel. In today's video, we're talking about all things Web 3.0. We'll take a look at how we got to Web 3 by examining its predecessors, Web 1 and Web 2. From there, we'll take a look at some of Web 3.0's defining features before examining some of its possible disadvantages. And lastly, we'll take a look at some real-world Web 3.0 applications already being implemented. Stick around till the end, this video is going to be a good one. Perhaps the best way to explain what Web 3.0 is, is by taking a look at where it all started. In 1989, Sir Tim Berners-Lee invented the World Wide Web and ushered in the era between 1989 and 2005 known as Web 1.0, also referred to as the Static Web. The main goal of Web 1.0 was to help people find information. It offered little to no user interaction. There was no content creation or even commenting. Pages were static, meaning you could only read them, and tables and frames were used to organize and align elements on a page. There were very few content creators, and it was designed to be consumed only. Web 2.0 was a paradigm shift in how people used and interacted with the Internet. It is the Internet that most of us know today. Interactivity, social connectivity, and user-generated content have entirely supplanted the sterile web pages of Web 1.0 over the last 15 to 20 years. Web 2.0 allows user-generated content to be viewed by millions of people all over the world in a matter of seconds. Key breakthroughs like mobile internet access and social networks, as well as sophisticated mobile devices like iPhones and other smartphones, have fueled the exponential growth of Web 2.0. The emergence of applications, self-publishing platforms like WordPress and Squarespace, and social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube marked Web 2.0. These websites have a strong emphasis on user-generated content, participation, and user-friendly layouts. Some of the most popular tools that we use today were introduced in this era. A few of those tools included blogs and podcasts. In the Web 2.0 age, the value of user feedback, opinions, and viewpoints became critically important. Which finally brings us to Web 3.0. While Web 3.0 is still very much in its infancy, there are a few defining features. Number 1. Decentralization. In Web 2.0, computers search for information using HTTP in the form of unique web addresses, which is stored in a fixed location, usually on a single server. Because Web 3.0 allows information to be retrieved based on its content, it can be kept in several locations at the same time. There is no fixed location and therefore, it is decentralized. With decentralization, users retain more control over their own data. For example, almost everything you do online is tracked and monitored. When you check your Facebook feed, Facebook tracks what you look at, how long you look at it, what you like, and what you don't like amongst other things. They then use this information to better target advertisements to you. Because data is decentralized in Web 3.0, it means that users will be better able to control their own data. Decentralized data networks allow different data generators to sell or exchange their data without losing ownership, jeopardizing privacy, or relying on middlemen. Number 2. Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning through technologies based on semantic web ideas and natural language processing, machines will be able to understand information in the same way that people do. Machine learning will also be used in Web 3.0, which is a branch of artificial intelligence that combines data and algorithms to mimic how humans learn while continuously improving accuracy. These capabilities will allow computers to provide faster and more relevant results in a variety of sectors, such as medication research and novel materials, as opposed to the current focus on targeted advertising. Number 3. Trustless and Permissionless Systems 
Web 3.0 will be trustless, meaning the network will allow users to engage directly without going through a trusted middleman. It will also be permissionless. There will be no governing body for which a user would need to gain authorization from. And finally, number 4, Ubiquity and Connectivity. Ubiquity is having the ability to be everywhere, even at the same time. To put it another way, it means to be omnipresent. In a way, Web 2.0 is already ubiquitous. Take Facebook for example. With Facebook, a user may instantaneously capture and post an image, which then becomes ubiquitous because it is accessible to anybody, regardless of location, as long as they have access to the social media platform. Web 3.0 takes it to the next level by making the internet itself accessible at any time to everyone everywhere. With all the benefits of Web 3.0, it's not without a few disadvantages or limitations. For one, it has complicated functionality. Web 3.0 can be difficult for anyone to wrap their head around. As such, people are often hesitant to use what they don't understand. Secondly, Web 3.0 will only work on advanced devices, making it difficult for anyone or any business that cannot afford such devices to use it. Because technologically savvy consumers are the ones who will benefit the most from Web 3.0, the complexity of the technology is likely to limit its universal adoption. That being said, there are some technologies out there that are already making use of Web 3.0. Some you may even be familiar with. Siri, Apple's voice-controlled AI assistant has been available on every iPhone since the Model 4S. Siri is able to perform complex and personalized commands by combining speech recognition with artificial intelligence. Amazon's Alexa and Samsung's Bixby are similar AI assistants. These AI assistants can take complex requests and immediately perform specific actions or provide detailed information. Wolfram Alpha is another technology making use of Web 3.0. Wolfram Alpha is billed as a computational knowledge engine that answers queries directly by computation. This differs from a list of web pages that you would receive as results from a search engine. On this platform, you can write in a question, and it will understand it and return responses that are relevant to the query's context. For example, if you enter in two cups of blueberries, Wolfram Alpha will provide you with the nutritional value, the number of calories, and any other pertinent information on two cups of blueberries. In this scenario, it provides you with a starting place for further investigation. And that's all we have for today's video. As previously mentioned, Web 3.0 can be a difficult concept to wrap one's head around. Hopefully today's video was able to provide some clarity however on the future of the web. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a like and be sure to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for joining us and we'll catch you in the next one.